Okay, so let's take a look at um, some applications of linear curve fitting. We have here a problem. Um, you're going on a road trip, and after driving for two hours, you notice mile marker 180. So you're at mile marker 180. Six hours into the trip, you notice mile marker 440. So we want to create a linear model for your trip in which X represents the number of hours you have been driving and Y represents the mile marker you are passing. So in this case, X is going to be in hours and Y is going to be in miles. Uh, all right, so, or the mile marker you're actually passing. So let's go ahead and create those ordered pairs. The first ordered pair, after two hours, so the number of hours would be two, and that matches up with 180 for the mile marker, so mile marker 180. Also, the next ordered pair then, after six hours, so you've been driving for six hours now, so six is the number of hours, you notice mile marker 440. All right, so now we have our two ordered pairs, okay? We have our two ordered pairs. What we want to do now is we want to go ahead and uh, use a formula to find the slope. So here's the slope formula. It says if a line passes through points x1, y1 and x2, y2, then the slope m of the line is given by this formula. All right, well, let's see. In this case, using this formula results in, well, let's see, this would be my x1 and my y1, that's one point, x2, y2, that's my other point, so that the slope would equal y2, which is 440, minus y1, which is 180, divided by x2, which is 6, minus x1, which is 2. All right, this calculation gives me numerator 260, 60 over denominator 4. Now, the 440 was a number of miles, and the 180 was also a number of miles. The 6 and the 2 were both measurements of um, time. They were in hours. So when I do this division, I actually get uh, 65, and the units are going to be miles per hour, miles per hour. So that gives me 65 miles per hour. The slope in this case actually represents the average speed on this trip between the second and sixth hour. Between the second, second and sixth hour, we were averaging 65 miles per hour. All right, now that we have our slope, now we know that m is equal to 65. What we want now is we want to go ahead and uh, we want to, oops, we want to go ahead and we want to write the equation because we want to come up with an equation. So here's point slope form. If you know a point on the line and you know the slope. So here's the slope. And here are two points on the line. Let's grab this point right here. So I know the model that I'm looking for. The equation goes through this point right here. I know that because it was one of the original points. And I know it has this slope because I just found that. So what I want to do now is I want to use this point slope form formula to come up with the equation of a line of the line. All right. So still the same question. But this reads, if a line passes through point x1, y1, which I have x1, y1 right here, and has slope m, here's the slope m right here, then the point slope form of the equation of the line is given by this formula. So let's go ahead and write out that out. That's going to give me y minus y1. Remember y1 is this 180. 180 is equal to m, which we just saw was 65. We just found that times x minus x1, and x1 in this case is 2. So we get this equation. This is a model, actually. I want to put this in slope-intercept form so, I can, so it can look like a function, all right? So what I'm going to do is, first, I'm going to distribute the 65. So I get y minus 180 
is equal to 65x, and that's going to be minus 130. So this gives me y equals, and I'll have 65x, and what I'm doing is I'm adding 180 to both sides to get y by itself, 180. So these would cancel out, and I'll just get y, and on the right-hand side, I'd have 65x, and then negative 130 plus 180 is actually equal to 50. So here's a model that if I tell it x, the number of hours I've been driving, it'll tell me y, which is what mile marker I'm passing. So for instance, if you plug in 0 for x, that's after you haven't driven at all, it'll tell you that you're at mile marker 50. So we didn't start at mile marker 0, we started at mile marker 50. Or if you plug in 2, for instance, you would get 65 times 2 is 130, plus 50 is 180, and indeed, after two hours, we were at mile marker 180. So we could even use this to find um, how far we've gotten after mile 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. Okay, so this is my model. Let's take a look at one more example. All right, so for a three-hour house call, a plumber charges you $300. For an eight-hour house call, the same plumber charges you $550. We want to create a linear model for the cost of a house call in which X represents the number of hours spent and Y represents the cost of the house call. All right, well, once again, we're being given two ordered pairs here. The first ordered pair is three hours and $300. And the second ordered pair is eight hours for $550. So there I have my two ordered pairs. First thing I want to do is find the slope. Remember, the slope was equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which in this case is going to be 550 minus 300 over 8 minus 3 which gives me 250 over 5. 250 over 5 is 50. Now this one is slightly different than the last one. The last one, the two numbers in the numerator were measuring miles, and the, number in the, denominator, the numbers in the denominator were measuring hours, so we got miles per hour. In this case, the top numbers are actually measuring dollar amounts. So this slope actually represents dollars per hour. So this is dollars per hour. So it turns out that this plumber is actually charging us $50 per hour. $50 per hour. Now what I want to do is I want to use this slope, 50, and I want to use point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I want to come up with the, an equation that models the cost of this plumber, where y will represent the cost and x will represent the number of hours he was at the house. All right, so let's plug everything in that we know. We have y minus, and then let's choose one of these y values, OK? Let's work with this ordered pair. So it's going to be y minus 300 is equal to m, which we just found was 50 times x minus 3. So I just worked with this point right here. We could have done the same thing with the other point. It would give us the same equation, actually. So now I'm going to simplify this, solving it for y. I'm going to distribute. So I get y minus 300 is equal to 50x minus 150. And then I add 300 to both sides. So I get uh, plus 300 plus 300, I get y is equal to 50x plus 150. Now, here's what that means. Um, that means that the cost of the plumber's house call is equal to 50 times the number of hours he spends at the house plus $150. So what that means is when the plumber comes to your house, house for the house call, before, when he decides to take the job, before he starts working, when time is equal to zero, 
he already charges you $150 for the house call, and then he charges you $50 for each additional hour. So if you plug in a number of hours, this equation will give you how much you are paying for that house call.